Welcome to Perfect Guardian and I'll tell you the difference between Roman Republic and Empire. Not many people are aware of the fact that Rome was first a republic before getting converted into an empire. This might appear to be paradoxical to some as becoming a republic is a process that usually starts from autocracy. However, history tells us that Rome was a well-developed republic with the rule of law and elected representatives in 100 BC. But personal ambitions and power equations led to circumstances where it got changed into an empire. As the name implies, there were obvious differences between the Roman Republic and Roman Empire that I am going to tell you. Now, Roman Republic. It is hard to imagine that 500 years before Christ, Rome was a well-developed civilization with a republic in place. In fact, republic in Rome flourished for about 500 years before an era of Roman Empire started. There are evidence to suggest that republic was formed in Roman in Rome in 509 BC. That was characterized by a government made up of elected representatives of the people of Rome. The authorities were elected for fixed terms and the country flourished and expanded to become the most powerful nations of the world. However, with expansion, generals and politicians got more powers and got corrupt with his muscle and the money power. They were elected officials just like senators and congressmen as in modern US. But with the passage of time, these officials became more and more powerful. The result was a constant struggle for power and machinations to beat others to become more and more powerful. Eventually, it was a rule characterized by anarchy and there was choice all around. Now, what was Roman Empire? Julius Caesar was one person who had other ideas inside the Republic. He became the governor of Gaul, Gaul rising through the ranks. He was able to make much money and he earned the respect from the others because of his exceptional abilities of a general. He made many enemies because of his personal ambitions and feeling threatened. He attacked and invaded Italy. However, he could rule for just two years before getting killed by senators. His nephew, Augustus, took reins over from him and killed all enemies of Caesar. He took Rome and gave Egypt to his ally Mark Antony. Later, an affair between Queen Cleopatra and Antony made Augustus suspicious and he attacked Egypt. Both Antony and Cleopatra committed suicide. Augustus became the first emperor of Rome in 31 BC. Augustus laid the foundation of an empire that saw five emperors. While today we have notions of a republic being better than an empire, the fact that the public paved way for an empire is a proof of a manner in which senators who were elected representatives became powerful with the expansion of territories. It became difficult to control increasing territories under the republic with expansion and this led to a situation where generals to the army became powerful and started to harbor political ambitions. Julius Caesar decided to control not just territory but eventually the whole of Rome. He was the first person who had ambitions to become the ruler of entire Rome that was fulfilled by his nephew Augustus. When he became the emperor of Rome, the transition from the republic to the empire was thus complete. It is easy to say in hindsight that the republic was a reflection of the aspirations of the common people. However, the fact remains that the power remained concentrated in the hands of chosen Few, even in times in Rome, was a republic. If anything, the elected officials had a fixed term and could not harbor of a lifetime of power during the times when Rome was a republic. So thank you. Please subscribe to my channel Perfect Guardian and give your comments.